Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie with the next in the series of our storage management videos. In the previous videos, we've looked at the basics of setting up logical volumes. We've seen how to take an existing logical volume and extend it by adding a new physical volume to it and just adding the extra capacity. In this video, we're going to look at striped and mirrored logical volumes. And first, we're going to look at striped logical volumes. And with a striped logical volume, what we're going to do is we're going to take two or possibly more than two drives. We're going to set each one of them up as a physical volume, add them all to the volume group, and then we're going to set it up so that when we do a write operation, what's going to happen is... We are going to write a stripe there on that drive, then write a stripe on that drive, write a stripe on that drive, write a stripe on that drive, and we're just going to keep on doing that until a write operation is complete. And what that does is it speeds up the write process. So it gives us better performance when we are writing large amounts of data to a storage device. So it's really, really cool. Now, someone a couple of videos ago did ask the question if striped logical volumes are the same as RAID. Yes. If you know what RAID is, then yes, this is the same as RAID 0. But if you don't know what RAID is, don't worry about that for right now. We'll get to that later. But I just wanted to answer that question. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's really cool concept, and uh, if there is an advantage of logical volumes over software RAID, it's going to be the fact that with logical volumes, you can do snapshots, and we haven't talked about snapshots yet. That's something I should have mentioned in the introductory video to the logical volume series, and I completely forgot about it, but anyway, what it is, is it's just a way to do a backup. So you can take a snapshot and restore it whenever you need to. If you're coming over from the Windows world, if you know about the volume shadow copy service on Windows, then you pretty much know how snapshots work. It's the same thing, except that with volume shadow copy, you're, it's all automatic. With snapshots, you have to do it yourself. But anyway, that's a topic for a future video about doing snapshots, okay? But anyway, uh, this is the basics of a striped logical volume. Now, notice here, too, we have dev sdb1 right there and dev sdc1 right there. These do have to be on separate drives. Now, having said that, for some inexplicable reason, the logical volume software will let you put each one of these physical volumes on the same drive and set it up as a striped logical volume. It never, never do that, okay? <laughs> Not only are you defeating the purpose of striped logical volumes then, you're actually making things worse because now you're thrashing that one drive to death. So always, 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 even though the software allows you to put them all on one drive, always, always, always have separate drives for each one of these physical volumes. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. So then what is the basic process for creating your striped logical volume? Well, you're going to start out the exact same way you did when you created your normal linear logical volume. You're first going to partition disk or partition disks rather and toggle them to either 8E or 8E00, depending upon whether you are doing F disk or G disk, you're going to convert them to physical volumes. And again, each drive that you add to this striped logical volume is going to be its own physical volume. Just 
make one big honking physical volume out of the entire drive, right? And then you're going to add them to the add the PVs to the volume group. And then finally, you're going to create the logical volume. Okay, and this command here for creating the striped logical volume is the only thing that's different. And it's not a lot different, but just a little bit different. So, let's take a look at that. Okay, folks, so here is the only command that's different from all the others for creating a striped logical volume. So we're still using the lvcreate command as we did before, except now we've added a couple of extra option switches. So you see here we have a 20 gigabyte volume here, all total, that we are doing. And, uh, of course, 19.9 uh, because we have a little bit of overhead for the header stuff of the physical volume, of course. And here we have the lowercase i2. This designates the number of drives that are in this striped logical volume. So if we were to have like three drives instead of two drives, that would be a lowercase i3. Four drives, of course, would be a lowercase i4, and so on. And then over here, we have the size of the stripe that goes on each volume. So this is an uppercase i with a 64. I do not know where that 64 figure is derived from, but for some reason, somebody decided that's the optimal size stripe to put on each volume, or in each uh, drive, rather, as you're going through. So that's what we go with. And then, of course, as we saw before, when we created the regular linear logical volume, we have a dash in there to specify the name of the logical volume. And this is the name of the volume group which we are creating this striped logical volume from. So when we do this, the logical volume software is very, very smart. It already knows just from this, the number of drives we have in that logical volume that are available to put into that striped volume group, and it automatically does all that for us. So it's really, really cool. And then once we get done with that command, you are going to go ahead and format the logical volume. And nowadays, that probably means either ext4 or xfs, as we've already talked about. And then you will mount it. Mount it on your preferred mount point. So, again, I mean, all that is the same. Other than this command right here, Everything is the same as we've done before. So if you've not watched the previous videos, uh, you know, just it, it don't know how to do that, just go ahead and watch the previous videos and you'll get the idea of how to do that. Because, uh, you know, I'm not going to do that whole demo all over again. Okay. So that is striped logical volumes. Easy, right? Okay, next we have the mirrored logical volumes. And this works differently from the striped logical volumes because, well, for one thing, with the striped logical volumes, I forgot to mention that the drives that you put into a striped logical volume all combine so that you have the combined capacity of, of all of those drives that you have in that striped logical volume. But with a mirrored logical volume, the purpose is strictly for redundancy. So you really only have just the capacity of one drive that's in that mirrored logical volume. Now, in a mirrored logical volume, you actually, you see there we have three drives as part of this, but 
we only have two drives which hold the data. So you can have like SDC1, SDD1, hold the data, and whatever gets written to one of these drives will get written to the other drive. So when one drive goes bad, all you got to do is pop the bad drive out and pop a new drive in, and you're good. Now with mirrored logical volumes, you have to have a third volume to act as a mirror log. And this is really the reason that I do not recommend using mirrored logical volumes because you have to have that third drive for that mirrored log. And I don't know why they set it up like that, but they did. So what I'm going to tell you here is that if you have to choose between using a mirrored logical volume and RAID 1, which is another form of mirroring drives, go with the RAID 1. Don't go with the mirrored logical volume, all right? Because with the RAID 1, you don't have to have that third drive to act as a mirror log, okay? That's only in the mirrored logical volumes. But if you really, really want to see how to do a mirrored logical volume, again, all the preliminary steps are the same as they were. So what we're doing here is we're adding three drives, three physical volumes to the volume group this time. And we're going to use two of those drives for the actual data and one for the mirrored log. So this is the command then. So again, we're using a 20 gigabytes. And the dash M1 means that we are making one mirrored copy. It means that we're having two drives, one as the original drive, one as a mirror. And then again, the name of the logical volume and the volume group from which we are creating that logical volume. And then, of course, format it and mount it, same as always. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's really it for the striped and mirrored logical volume business. So, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.